Hello people, welcome to the last video in my series on building a stack virtual machine. If you remember last time, uh, we were going to finish working on the stack VM main file. So we're going to open up uh, main.cpp and right now it has a uh, built-in program and what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that we can read our binary file that we created with our stack assembler and uh, load it into our virtual machine and run it. But first, before we do that, uh, there is one small uh, uh, problem, or actually one thing I forgot to do in our SASM. So we're going to go back into there, into SASM. We're going to open up our uh, uh, sasm.cpp file and we're going to go down to our compile to instructions and what we're going to do is at the very end uh, uh, before we return our instructions is we're going to add We're going to add the halt instruction at the end, so we can always halt our program at the end. And our uh, code for that will be for uh, and zero, basically zero at the end. That way, our program doesn't get stuck in an infinite loop. So with that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll make our stack assembler and then we will run our stack assembler on our test program and it'll create an out.bin file. Uh, now just so you remember, our test program was adds 3 and 4, it multiplies that by 2, it adds another 2, and it divides by 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our stack VM and uh, let's remove our old out.bin just to show that we did. And what we'll do is we'll move our, let's see, let's move the out.bin into out.bin here. So now we have our, out, our new out.bin file and now we're ready to fix up our stack vm actually wait our main cpp file so let's go ahead and add a couple more includes let's add io stream so we can print out some things let's add f stream so we can use our file I.O. And let's go ahead and use our standard namespace. That way we don't have to type as much. Now let's set up our main function to take command line arguments. Now let's go ahead and check our command line argument sizes. If it if we have less than two arguments, then let's display a message to the user, a usage message. And let's say they need to type in the name of the program and a file name. And then we'll return zero that, oops. Now what we can do is let's go ahead and open up our file. Now that we know that we have 
correct number of arguments. Let's open it up as a binary file. And what we're going to do is we're going to read in um, we're going to read in integers from our file. And let's see, let's create a vector. Actually, we can just say a vector now of 32 bit integers. We'll call it our program. And what we'll do is while we can still read an integer, and we're going to read size of integer. While we can still do that, we're going to push that back onto our program. Now we don't need this anymore. So now we've loaded our program from memory or from a file. We've loaded it into our memory through our load program function, and then we can run our program. So let's go ahead and save that and make our stack VM. And let's try to run it with our out.binary file. So let's take a look here. So we push three and four to the stack. We add three and four and we get seven. We push two to the stack. We multiply that and get 14. We push two to the stack and add, uh, and add 14 and two to get 16. We push four to the stack and we divide 16 by four to get four and then we halt. So it looks like the program is running. So now we have our, uh, and our stack as, uh, assembler and our stack virtual machine. It's uh, a very, very, very simplistic program, but you have everything that you need to add more to the program and make it uh, more fully featured. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.